Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has spoke at an event on Tuesday promoting an initiative to help military families in his state. Fresh from a resounding re-election victory, the Republican governor sounded a positive tone and announced a spate of policies to help service members, their spouses, and children, enhancing the educational opportunities and addressing the challenges faced by military sons and daughters who are constantly moving are key to DeSantis' goals. The popular governor is considered a possible contender for the Republican 2024 presidential nomination. Recent polls show DeSantis ahead of former President Trump for the first time. Many conservatives are beginning to rally behind DeSantis after disappointing midterm election results for the GOP, which have been largely blamed on the 45th president. Thank you. Great to be here. Thanks so much. Great, great to be back uh, in Okaloosa County. Please have a seat. Uh, we're really excited about today's announcement. Also just have to say thanks to Northwest Florida for last Tuesday. We really appreciate it. We were able to, I mean, if you look at Santa Rosa, Okaloosa, Walton, you know, kind of this stretch, uh, you know, we had massive, massive gravity-defying margins, uh, and we really appreciate the support. Um, it means a lot. You know, they would, like North Korea, Iraq used to do like these 99%. Like we obviously, you know, it's a free and fair election, but for us to be winning, um, you know, Okaloosa by like 53%, Walton by 64 and, and uh, Santa Rosa by 60%. I mean, that's a huge, huge uh, 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 wave of support. So, so thank you. We appreciate it very much. And And what governor has been to Northwest Florida more than me? None of them have been there more than me. So we appreciate it. And today uh, we're uh, excited to be here for an announcement uh, with uh, Manny Diaz, our Commissioner of Education, your Superintendent of Schools, Marcus Chamber, uh, John Spolsky, the principal here at Fort Walton Beach High School. We have Senator Broxson with us here today, Representative Pat Maney here today. And then we're going to hear from Jesus Barrio, retired U.S. Army, father of 11th grade student Genevieve Barrio and one of the th great things about Northwest Florida is we have a, a great active duty military component uh, across a number of our counties and you know I'm a Navy guy so I know a lot uh, a lot about the Pensacola base over in Escambia but of course you know you look here in, uh, in Okaloosa massive massive footprint uh, of active duty personnel and so that's something that we really appreciate it's something that that we're happy to have we think it, it it enriches our communities but we also understand that there can be challenges that that come with the military lifestyle uh, oftentimes military families are moving from base to base over the course of a career you get those pcs orders uh, two two and a half years into a tour and you end up, uh, you could be on the other side of the United States. And, and that in and of itself is a challenge. But when you're talking about having school children that are making that change, that can be very, very challenging. And a child uh, whose parents are in active duty service will move to a new school six to nine times from the time they enter kindergarten until they graduate from high school if their parents are serving throughout that whole period of time. So, so that's not easy to do. Uh, that's something that, uh, that does present challenges for us. But we wanted to make sure in Florida we're doing all that we can to head off those challenges and to make sure that our school system was very sensitive to uh, some, of the, some of the challenges posed when you have uh, mil active duty military that, that, are, that are constantly moving around. So last year, we worked with the legislature uh, and I signed legislation to establish what we call the Purple Star Campus Program. Uh, and the Florida Department of Education under this program recognizes schools that go above and beyond to help children of military families to succeed. So the individual schools that apply for this designation uh, must do the following. One, designate a faculty member as the military point of contact. Number two, establish a student-led transition program where military students are connected with non-military peers that can help them engage in school activities. Uh, you need to also reserve at least 5% of open enrollment seats for military students and you need to provide teachers with more professional development uh, specialized for military students. And Okaloosa County has the highest percentage of military student enrollment out of any school district in the state of Florida. Over 5,600 uh, children of military service members are enrolled 
in Okaloosa schools. And so I'm happy to announce today that 35 schools in Okaloosa County will now be designated as Purple Star Schools. We're also uh, designating another 79 schools across the state of Florida for a total of 114 Purple Star, Purple Star schools in 10 school districts throughout Florida. So in addition to Okaloosa, we will have schools earmarked in Brevard County, Citrus, Clay, Duval, Escambia, Hillsborough, Monroe, Okaloosa, Santa Rosa, and Walton counties. And so this is a big deal for the state, and I think it's going to be something that's going to be very beneficial for our military families and, and for their kids. Uh, earlier this year, I also signed legislation allowing veteran, uh, veterans with four years of military experience and an associate's degree to obtain a five-year temporary teaching certificate now rather than have to wait until they earn the bachelor's degree. Of course, they're progressing towards that bachelor's degree, but we recognize that active duty service as being something that is very meaningful and can have a, a very positive benefit uh, with students in the classroom. And so since that time, we've had 495 veterans apply for this program. And you know, there were some people criticizing us because we're welcoming veterans you know, to be teachers, which is just ridiculous. And they said that somehow, you know, you being serving, you know, in like Afghanistan or something, that's just the equivalent of bringing any warm body, I think one of these people said, to, 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 and that's just totally wrong. Uh, this is valuable experience, but guess what? You apply, you still gotta make the cut. They gotta think that you're good to do it. So uh, these, uh, we've gotten a lot of uh, applications and people I think have been very impressed with the quality of individuals who are coming. Uh, in August, we announced we're going to have additional legislative proposals in 2023 to help get additional retired first responders and veterans into our classroom, including providing bonuses. Uh, so we look forward to being able to do that. Uh, but to further support those efforts today, I'm directing Commissioner Diaz and Florida DOE to create a first of its kind Purple Star School Teacher Leader uh, teacher leadership program. And through the program, the department will work with the Purple Star Schools in Okaloosa, Santa Rosa, Escambia, and Walton counties to set up their own teacher certification and professional development programs. Each school will recruit veterans to take part in the program as they work toward their teaching certificate, which each one given a mentor teacher. They will also recruit veterans to help provide the professional development with a focus on the needs of military families. Not only will this program employ veterans, it will also allow districts and schools to conduct their own educator professional development and to certify their own teachers. And so I think what we were able to do is, um, you know, really move the ball forward across a wide variety of fronts. I'm proud that Okaloosa County is leading the way uh, with this new program, and we look forward to being able uh, to continue to serve uh, the families of, of active duty military personnel. You notice people that serve a whole career uh, Air Force, Navy in particular, they go all across the country, but when they're stationed in Florida, they usually don't give up that Florida residency. They usually keep it. They usually keep that driver's license. They keep the voting. They keep, uh, if they have property, uh, a lot of times they will keep, keep, keep the homestead and all that, and that's great, and we're fortunate. And then when they end up leaving active duty, uh, a huge percentage of them will end up coming back and, and moving back to Florida, particularly here in Northwest Florida. So we want to welcome that, and we want to continue to make these communities really, really strong. So I'm excited about today. Thank you for our Northwest Florida communities for really leading the way on this, and I think that this is going to be a great, great success. Okay, Manny Diaz.